According to a study from Pittsburgh University, 5.5 million people in the United States consume an analgesic, antipyretic, non-steroidal, anti-inflammatory drug each day. In the fitness community, according to Trapp and colleagues in 2002, analgesic drugs are commonly consumed to reduce or prevent pain and soreness encountered after unaccustomed exercise. In the study that I'm about to present to you in this video, the authors tested the hypothesis that taking analgesic drugs before exercise could reduce the protein synthesis response to training, thus reducing your gains. Isn't it scary to hear that something so commonplace could cancel out all your work in the gym? The results were shocking. I'm Yanis Christoulas and I welcome you all to the first episode of the Sisyphus Rock. But you're probably wondering what is the Sisyphus Rock and why I chose that name for this series of episodes. According to Greek mythology, Sisyphus was punished for cheating death twice by being forced to roll an immense boulder up a hill only for it to roll down every time it neared the top, repeating this action for eternity. I find this story very similar to people that give everything they got at the gym only to see the results and progress slipping away due to factors that are killing their gains. In this series of episodes, I'm going to present different factors that are proven by science to steal the results of your hard work, thus making your progress a Sisyphus rock. So without further ado, let's dive in and see what was proven by science. So today we are talking about painkillers. This practice includes the scenario that athletes that get sore after unaccustomed exercise use analgesics to reduce their pain and get back to training faster. Of course, analgesics cannot speed up recovery and they can only reduce the pain that we get from soreness. But even that is under debate as we're going to see in the study that I'm about to present to you. I use the term unaccustomed exercise because as we saw on my other video on soreness, it's the type of training stimulus that has been shown to trigger delayed onset muscle soreness, or in other words, DOMS. This is also the type of exercise that was used in the study I'm about to present to you in order to trigger DOMS. The two most popular analgesics consumed for muscle soreness are ibuprofen and acetaminophen. Both of these drugs are supposed to relieve muscle soreness and pain through separate mechanisms. Ibuprofen is known to block cyclooxygenase, which then reduces metabolites produced by this enzyme, such as prostaglandins. Prostaglandins have also been shown to regulate protein metabolism, which in simple words means that it is important for muscle growth. So, if ibuprofen can reduce prostaglandins, this can lead to a reduced protein synthesis. In addition, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, also known as NSAIDs, similar to ibuprofen, have been shown to blunt protein metabolism in animal skeletal muscle. For this reason, ibuprofen would be expected to interfere with muscle protein metabolism after exercise, and this is exactly what this study tried to examine. On the other hand, the analgesic action mechanism of acetaminophen, also known as paracetamol, is less clear. However, it is believed to have its analgesic effect within the central nervous system. Thus, acetaminophen wouldn't be expected to interfere with muscle protein metabolism after exercise. But I'd love to see what is your experience in the comments. Did you ever thought that painkillers could actually reduce muscle growth? The study I've been talking about came from trapping colleagues in 2002. What they did was take 24 untrained males and randomly divide them into three different groups. The ibuprofen group, the acetaminophen group, and the placebo group. All participants completed a unilateral, high-intensity eccentric exercise with each leg in order to trigger muscle soreness. At the onset of exercise and afterwards, the first group took ibuprofen, the second acetaminophen, 
and the placebo group took the same number of pills which were indistinguishable from the drug doses. Before and after the training protocol, measurements were taken for skeletal muscle functional synthesis rate to examine muscle protein synthesis and perceived muscle soreness where they asked participants to subjectively rate their soreness from 1 to 9, with 1 being the absence of soreness and 9 being unbearable soreness. The results showed an increase in protein synthesis following exercise in the placebo group. As expected, ibuprofen significantly reduced the protein synthesis response to exercise. However, a surprising outcome was that acetaminophen also significantly reduced the protein synthesis response to exercise through a mechanism that is still unclear. In addition, participants reported similar average and maximal ratings of perceived muscle soreness with no difference between the three groups. In simple words, what happened was that the groups that took the drugs didn't reduce their pain from soreness while they simultaneously significantly reduced their protein synthesis response to exercise. Practical takeaway. With the current data, I'd say that there is no reason for taking painkillers as a recovery strategy. Painkillers do not speed up recovery and as it was shown, they will not reduce the pain that you get from soreness. At the same time, they will definitely impair the growth of your muscles or anyone who exercises regularly. The pain that you feel after training is a sign from your body that you should listen. That being said, you should always give to your body an adequate amount of time to recover before you proceed with your workouts. Pain is a way of communication. Taking painkillers at the recovery phase would be like interrupting your own communication with your body and its needs. As we saw in my previous video, having a good overall flexibility level has proven by science to be an important factor in getting less soreness. So if you want to benefit from that, make sure to check out my project in the description below. Practical takeaway for coaches. Try to estimate and then record the exact amount of time that your trainee needs to recover from each activity. Structure a training plan according to this individualized data and don't repeatedly introduce unaccustomed training stimuluses to this plan. Design a gradual progression for all training contents and you'll probably never have to deal with severe muscle soreness. But even if you have to deal with muscle soreness in some cases, you can easily treat common muscle soreness with active recovery strategies that I will get in detail in one of my future videos. If you found this video helpful, share it with your friend that needs to see it, hit the like button below and remember to subscribe because I will be making more videos in various fitness topics. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time.